Hi, my name is Kehau, <coughs> and I've done 11 years total in prison. Um, my last prison, I j well, I, I'm not extended furlough right now, and um, I did six years. So my charges that led me to prison, because I've been in abusive relationships, I chose to do drugs, and you know, I chose to live an unhealthy lifestyle. My behaviors and my criminal thinking have, have led me to prison. You know what, at, when I was in prison, I, I looked at it like, um, at first I was really upset. I was like, like asking, you know, God, like, why am I here? Why, why did I make all those bad choices? I have nine children. And, um, but you know what, today I look at it as a blessing. I look at prison as a blessing because I learned so much about myself. I found myself. I worked on all the issues that I needed to work on. I dealt with many issues that I had from my childhood. And I look at it today as a blessing today. I have all my children back in my life. I came home to grandbabies. Um, the grandbabies love me even though I haven't you know, grew up with them. They love me so much and I have two jobs now. I have to um, come back to Hilo and get into a work follow program which they let you out and go job seeking. And I started doing that and you know, it was kind of hard because of the economy nowadays to find a job. But I end up, God bless me, I got two jobs. My life is so good today. And I wouldn't give it up for anything. Um, I only have two more years left on parole. I got paroled in February. They granted my parole because the path that I was on, the parole board looked at it, the facility looked at it, the staff looked at it, and they granted my parole. So I got paroled and I'm gonna be out in June. I'm sti I still have to check into the facility. But, um, you know, I look at my grandbabies and my children and I believe in my heart that I'm not going to go back to that lifestyle or today I know the choices to make, I, I know the, the right choices to make that will keep um, leading me forward in my life and to succeed in all that I do and to achieve and accomplish all my goals and dreams. That's all I have to say. Most of the time that I did was federal time in the mainland. Um, I've done some state time over here in Hawaii, uh, not that much, I just did 16 months. Um, for a drug charge. Um, I won't go into all that, but uh, it was basically a, a short amount of time. I found that there's a big difference between doing state time and uh, here in Hawaii and state time in the mainland. And there's a, especially uh, a big difference between doing federal time and doing state time. Uh, you have camps, which is called a, 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 an FPC, that's a federal prison camp. There's low security, medium security, high security, and uh, maximum and super max. And um, if you're in a medium or a low or a camp, uh, time can be kind of cushy. That's where they send your senators and, and uh, people who are politically associated or or people who have big money and had really good attorneys and or have white collar crimes especially. Uh, they're not really what I'd even call a prison. They're, they're more of a correctional facility. And um, there is a big difference between a camp, a correctional facility, and what's called a USP, which is your high or your max or your super max. Um, the higher you go up in security level, the much rougher it gets in prison. And, um, I started off in, um, in a medium security prison uh, because it was my first uh, real violent crime with the feds. Uh, even though I'd had an extortion charge before with the state, um, it was my first armed charge and I had uh, uh, 12 armed bank robberies uh, that I was convicted on six of the 12. Um, and. Um, uh, so I started off in a, in a medium security prison 
And uh, then as I got into some beefs with different people, because I was into drugs at the time, yeah, I was a heroin addict for 35 years. Uh, I've been clean for about three years now. And, um, you know, what, there's a lot of, there are a lot of drugs in prison. It depends on which prison you're in, but especially in the USPs, which is your highs and your maximum securities. Like if you're on a California USP, um, drugs are really prevalent. There's plenty of them. The price of drugs inside uh, Lompoc, California, um, is about the same as the price of drugs here on the street here in Hawaii. Now, if you get to Leavenworth, where I also did time, you're out in the middle. Of, you're in the middle of the United States, right about in the center, and but you're out in the middle of nowhere. And it's a lot harder for people to come visit you, and it's just a lot harder to get the drugs in uh, because of where it's at. It's so far away from anything, from, from any other towns or big cities or anything like that. So then the prices are a lot more. Uh, for example, in California, I could get a, a gram of heroin for $200. In Leavenworth, it would cost me about $600 for that same gram. Um, and you can buy pretty much anything in a high security prison. Uh, people in there are doing life. They really kind of don't care. Uh, there's people that aren't doing life like me, uh, but are doing lengthy sentences. Uh, but there's, if there's a will, there's always a way. And that's a big difference too between a jail and a prison too, is that a prison is just another world. It's, another, it's a world inside of another world. It's, uh, a jail um, is much more locked down. I would rather do a couple of years in a prison than one year in a county jail or in a jail. In a jail, you're locked down all the time. You have no movement. You can't hardly even contact anybody. They restrict you uh, while you're in jail. And um, uh, one of the reasons for that is to get you to plead out. In prisons, they like the, the guards there. They have what's called the SIS. It's a Special Investigative Services. And um, what they do is uh, they like to keep different races at each other's throats. Uh, and the reason they do that is um, if uh, me and Bob over here, who might be black, say for instance, um, if we're at each other's throat and we're not trusting each other, then it keeps us divided as groups. Yeah, if, uh, if they like to keep us divided because it breaks us into smaller groups and uh, because otherwise if we all came together uh, we're going to look for somebody to make a victim out of and if we're not making victims out of each other we're going to make victims out of the guards and the guards know this uh, and they can't control two or three thousand guys or four thousand or five thousand guys and some of the prisons are pretty big in the mainland yeah and you get that many guys together uh, the only way they can control you is through psychology and by keeping you divided you all have probably heard the term um, Together we stand, divided we fall. Yeah, so they like to keep us divided. Uh, anyway, good afternoon. My name is Kanani Albadillo. Uh, I'm 28 years old. I've been incarcerated since I was 22. Actually, tomorrow is my fifth straight year, going on six. Oh no, sixth straight year already. Incarcerated. I'm currently in a HCCC, the furlough program. I work my way back out into society. So what you do is you do your programs in the mainland prison, work your way back to the county jail so that you can start your re-entry. I was never an active gang member, but I have been a prospect for the Mexican Mafia, which is a Texas branch. But well, being that I'm from Hawaii, that's why I'm a pros that's why I was only considered a prospect. But even to say I'm prospect is is kind of kind of harsh for me because when prospect is somebody who put in in work and um, he trying to earn his stripes, whereas opposed in my, in my position, being from Hawaii, uh, I don't I don't I don't I don't do the gang thing. You know what I'm saying? But because I'm from Hawaii and where I was at. You, in the federal penitentiary, you hardly find Hawaiian inmates on the East Coast or the Midwest. We're mostly all in Oregon, California, Utah, places like that. And um, I became uh, what you would call guilty by association, being that the Mexicans would take me under their wing and have me sit on their tables and eat with them and whatnot. 
Uh, I became guilty by association, so therefore considered a prospect. Prospect is is kind of kind of harsh for me because when prospect is somebody who put in in work and um, he trying to earn his stripes, whereas opposed in my, in my position, being from Hawaii, uh, I don't I don't I don't I don't do the gang thing, you know what I'm saying? But because I'm from Hawaii and where I was at. You, in the federal penitentiary, you hardly find Hawaiian inmates on the East Coast or the Midwest. We mostly all in Oregon, California, Utah, places like that. And um, I became uh, what you would call guilty by association, being that the Mexicans would take me under the wing and have me sit on their tables and eat with them and whatnot. Uh, I became guilty by association, so therefore considered a prospect. I had to attend meetings, do the political parties, you know, sit there, listen to the rules, find out who gonna get hit, stay away from that area, what phones not to use, what showers not to use, um, what basketball courts you kind of go on. It's things like prison is garbage. I can read you all these questions and sound like everybody else, but my point in this is, my main objective is to come and make a difference and let you know that even though people go to prison, it's due to most likely a bad choice, not because they're a bad person. So, not everybody go to prison. You get you three phases for me when I went to prison. I see you get your first phase, which is longing for your loved ones. You know, you go through a depression. Um, then you get your, your anger and your guilt that you go through because you know you, you feel guilty for all the pain that you can cause on people. Then you find yourself being angry at yourself and then you're looking for people to blame and justify why you did what you did. But in essence, it's not nobody else's fault but your own. The old cliche says you make your bed, you lay in them, right? Um, then you get your third phase, which is adaptation. That's your make it or break it point. For me, it was either I'm gonna join up with them, patch up with them gang, come back to Hawaii, chop out, and branch out, network, and start something else over here. Or I'm gonna flip the script and find programs to make myself a better person, do a little bit more self-improvement so that I don't gotta be a part of this life no more.